The year is 1962. Virgil Exner is at the helm of the styling department over at Chrysler, and this was one of the last designs that he conjured up before being let go and replaced with Elwood Ingle later that year. Forward look, even though some think that it was a bit too forward. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to what it's like. And for the record, I'm a real person. None of this is done with AI. What it's like, the automotive channel that digs different, unique, weird, and cool cars from a world gone away. History, specs, design, and most importantly, we show what these cars are like post between four and five episodes each week with engine episodes on Wednesday. Plus, if you dig binging content, this is our 462nd episode. So there's 461 episodes just like this one. Subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. According to the calendar, spring is finally here. If you have a car in your personal collection, maybe you're affiliated with a museum and you have a car that you would love the world to see, drop me a line at what? underscore it's underscore like at yahoo.com especially looking in the western pennsylvania ohio southern michigan eastern indiana panhandle west virginia surrounding areas if interested email me 1962 plymouth model lineup these aren't in any particular order valiant sport fury fury belvedere savoy suburban Plymouth would offer the Valiant in the North American market from 1959. It's important to note when the Valiant first came out, it was a separate make from Plymouth. Valiant was a standalone brand until 1961, and then it went under the Plymouth moniker from 61 through 76, offered in four generations. 1962 falls in the first generation, which was produced from 1959 through 1962 designed by Virgil Exner and was originally called the Falcon after Exner's 1955 Chrysler Falcon concept car, Valiant, which means having or showing courage or valor. 1962 Plymouth Valiant could be had in three trim levels, V100, V200, and Signat 200. All trim levels except this Signet could be had in two-door sedan, four-door sedan, or four-door wagon. Signet 200 only came in one body style, the two-door sedan. Touted as the king of compacts, unit body constructed, the chassis was dipped and sprayed 13 times to help prevent rusting and corrosion. Inside, all vinyl, bucket seats, deep pile, carpet, cockpit-like dash, Options, not getting into all of the options, but here are a few. Push button, automatic torque flight, all weather, hot water heater and defrost. Yes, you had to pay extra for the heater. Transistor, radio, power steering, power brakes, outside left mirror, seat belts. Let's talk specs. 184.2 inches long, 70.4 inches wide, 53.3 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 106 and a half inches. It weighs 2,750 pounds. Price $2,230, which is equivalent to you spending $22,914.80 in year 2024. Total 1962 Plymouth production was 339,514 units of which total Valiant, 157,294, and of that, Signet 200 was 25,586 units. Moving on to engines, two engines on offer. Starting out in the basement, 170 cubic inch displacement, slant six, 2.7 liters. It's good for 101 horsepower at 4,400 RPM, 155 pound feet, or 210 Newton meters at around 2,400 RPM. Bore and stroke sizes may be rounded with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches. Compression is eight and a half to one. When backed with a three-speed manual, it's important to note that these are baseline numbers. Specs may vary depending on climate, elevation, driver, as well as rear end ratio, zero to 60, 14.2 seconds with a theoretical top speed of 89 miles per hour while achieving an average of anywhere between 16.1 to 
to 20 miles to the gallon. It's important to note that the ads claim 26.13 miles to the gallon. Moving on to the biggest and baddest engine on offer for the 1962 Plymouth Valiant, 225 cubic inch displacement, slant six, 3.7 liters. It's good for 145 horsepower, 4,000 RPM, 215 pound feet, or 292 newton meters at 2,800 RPM, with a bore of 3.4 inches and a stroke of 4.1 inches. Compression is 821 to 1. Four main bearings, when backed with a three speed manual transmission, zero to 60 could be had in 10.2 seconds, with a theoretical top speed of 95 miles per hour while averaging. 15 to 20 miles to the gallon. Transmissions, you had the three-speed manual and the push-button torque flight automatic. A good old summertime, but here's what time it is at your Plymouth Valiant dealers. S, A, B, E. It's save time. Time to save money on Valiant. Your Plymouth Valiant dealer is out to sell all Valiants immediately at big savings to you. A Valiant costs less than other compacts. See how much less than Falcon, Corvair, and up to $473 less than Olds F-85. Every Valiant has a Husky 101 horsepower Economy 6, a rugged rust-resisting unibody, torsion bar suspension, a six-passenger family sedan with lower-than-ever list prices and consistently high resale value. So see your Plymouth Valiant dealer this week and save. If you've been looking for a different car, this could be the car for you. This one's currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, with over a thousand cars for sale when recording this episode. Anybody can peruse their inventory, whether that be online or in person, for more information, pictures, and to get the full scoop on this very car. Be sure to click the link below after the show. Let's talk styling. So just look at how these headlight bezels are designed with the bright work around them, and then the black inside. Bumpers do not have overriders and or bumperettes. Notice how this grill, it's slanted. With Plymouth badge there, nice and proud in the center. Valiant spelled out on the top. This car does have a center line that goes back to the slightly curved windshield. This one is sitting on sitting on 13 inch wheels. The wheel wells are flared. This car does not have rocker molding. But just look at how this part comes off the fender and then ties back into where the door is. There's a better look at it. And then right there, it blends back into the door. Just look at this hood profile. This is how it like tapers in. Antenna on the passenger side. Posing windshield wipers with external cow. Here's a better look at this wraparound windshield. This car does have drip rails, which start right here, and they run the length of the cabin and here. I love the roof lines. There's a there's a line that starts right here. It's like a ridge.
and it doesn't go quite away. It gets smoothened out a little bit, but it's still there. This car has some interesting lines sculpted into this sheet metal. The rear wheel wells are also flared, just like the front ones. It has wraparound back glass at the rear. And this tail section kind of slopes down. Has a center line going towards the keyhole at the bottom there. It's all rounded. The brake lights sit inside here and notice the bezel around it's not flat it's like cupped it's almost like if you took a cap to a water bottle and you and you yeah it's that same shape look at these backup lights that's so cool where they put them This door isn't very thick, it's on the slender side, but it feels quality, it feels solid. These door panels feel vinyl, armrest is red, door handle to get out, window crank for the big window, operates like this. Notice it has this trim piece to go over top of the glass back here and meet. Also notice there is a gasket in here so it doesn't leak. Vent windows and they operate less. Coming down inside the pedal box down here, you have the um, high beam switch, emergency brake, emergency brake release. Park is down here. It's separate from the push buttons. This is a vent for the footwell vent. There is a, this is for the windshield washer, which I love that feature. I don't know why they stopped doing it like that. You don't have to hunt around for what stock it does. You just push that and that sprays the windshield washer fluid onto the window and wipes it. Brake, gas pedal. Just take a look at this interior. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here is what first person over the hood would look like. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Drive modes read, which are push buttons, reverse, neutral, drive, second, first, with park at the very bottom of the dash. There is a light just off camera at the bottom left. That is a brake warning light to let you know that the parking brake is engaged. Oil pressure light, headlights, speedometer, notice the numbers all go the same way. Odometer, gasoline gauge, turn signals, which is a rhombus style cutout for both directions. Coolant temperature, windshield wipers, amp meter, key slash ignition, heat and ventilation controls, off, defrost, high, low for fan blower speed, valiant radio, aftermarket AM FM radio just below it. Up above there are sun visors. They're a bit on the big side. There's my hand for reference. My hand is seven and a half inches long, so just to give you an idea of how big the sun visors are. Rear view mirror here in the center, as well as another sun visor over here for the passenger. Just look at this dashboard. It's very petite. It does have the defrost vents up here, both sides. As well as this little visor thing, I guess, to block out the sun so there's no reflection on the gauges. Also, just notice all of the different colors. You got red up here, red down here, black, and it curves. On to the glove box test. There is our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Yeah, it's the camera's too big. It's not going to fit in there. Will not fit. 
ashtray as well as a cigarette lighter. Footwell vent for the passenger down there in that footwell. Getting in the rear, but before we do, I'm not entirely sure if these seats have been redone. These seats are bright, bright red. But I came to this side to see if it would fold completely down. I love the bright work on the seats as well as the ashtray. But just look at how much space you have to get back there. This is what the front looks like from the back. Let's take a quick gander at the greenhouse or the pillar to glass ratio in this car, which is incredible. It's, it's almost like being in a car with no top at all because there really isn't that many pillars. Like there's the back pillar and there's the front pillar. Everything else is glass. You do not want to roll this car. You'll probably die. Nice big rear parcel shelf with a third brake light, wrap around back glass, and that's what visibility looks like out the back from the back seat. Let's talk seat back profile. This seat is really comfortable. It reclines as well as it cups in the, in the center of the seat, but it doesn't cup here in the center. There's no center armrest either. The bench does dip down a little bit, just ever so slightly, it more or less bulges here in the center and then it curved. But it's really comfortable back here. Knee situation. There's enough space to put my fingers in between my knee and the back of the seat. But I'm kind of sprawled out. If I sat up, my head is touching, it's grazing the top of the ceiling a little bit. There's, there's enough space. So this is what I look like sitting in the back of the Plymouth Valiant. My hair is grazing the headliner ever so slightly, but it's not that bad. Like I said, it's very bright in this car, very airy, um, spacious. So you just don't have that feeling of being claustrophobic. This car would be great if you had a family. Probably gets decent gas mileage with the 225 Slant 6. And it doesn't look like anything else out on the road. If, if you saw this in the wild, it would be like seeing a spaceship. And I think that's why I like it so much. Coming to the under the hood section, the hood release is this right here. It's all one motion. And the hood goes up super easy. It feels like it's counterbalanced and it is with these massive springs. This one's got dual master brake cylinder with power booster attached to it. Tiny radiator. That's a pretty big alternator for the engine. It's a pretty big alternator. There is a horn. This one has the windshield washer bag. Some of the heating stuff back there. Slant 6. Uh, 225 slant 6. This one has power steering. There's power steering pump down inside there. On the positive side, nothing except its sister, the Dodge Lancer, looks anything like it. Great greenhouse visibility, cool glove box, even though the camera doesn't fit inside. Bucket seat interior with nice feeling seats. Good performance slash economy combo with the 225 Slant 6, which will literally run forever. These are still affordable. Against it, unit body construction. Be sure to check Water likes to collect and rust from the inside out. Styling is a bit of an acquired taste. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather two scenarios today. In the first scenario, would you rather have a 1962 Ford Falcon or 1962 Plymouth Valiant Signet or 1962 Chevy 2? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. On to the second scenario, 1962 AMC American or 1962 Plymouth Valiant Signet or 1962 Chevy Corvair. Once again, going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free, pause the video. 
Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the name of the band and the song title correctly in the comment section will have their comment pinned to the top of it. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. It gives you the opportunity to share your rides, stories, experiences, anything that you would like to share with the community, go for it. Share it as long as it's car related. If you don't have Facebook and would still like to reach me, send me an email in the email listed earlier today. And this is way more than a car channel. And thank you guys so much for making this community. I love reading the comments. It's one of my favorite aspects of this channel. Until next time. Two.